Hey there, Thrivers and Survivors. It's Angie. How are you? I am here for the next episode of See Your Way Out of Toxic Situations, which is the self-employment escape. All right. And as promised, today we're going to start talking about how to build and monetize your blog as a platform. All right. For your work at home business. Let's get started. Should I do that again? <sighs> So, you know, when you pick a niche and you have a domain, which we did in our first video, I'll, I'll link to that for you, uh, you want to move to the next step and you want to start creating your new site. Okay, a lot of times people want to know whether they need a website or a blog for their business, right? Well, you know, obviously that's going to kind of depend on you, but I personally prefer a blog. However, we're going to talk about that. Static websites, which are just websites that don't change those are handy for things like a little mini site where maybe you're reviewing one you know a particular coffee maker you're trying to be an affiliate for or uh, you want a page on brewing tips for example if coffee happened to be your your niche uh, a page on the specs of the machine that you're trying to sell or a page you know on comparisons with another coffee maker these types of things can be handy like like I said for little mini sites which kind of can direct back to your actual site okay they are also great for service providers like a freelancer like I started out as a freelancer uh, if you want to be a ghostwriter or maybe you want to have uh, you know your portfolio online or some testimonials about your work and rates etc I think those are all important things um, but honestly in most cases you're just gonna want you're also at least going to want a blog okay and that's where I would start if I were you because blogs offer a lot of benefits to you as a business owner for example they provide freshness that Google and people need crave <laughs> uh, and as long as you know you, you stay committed to your topic within reason and you post on a regular basis th this offers you an evolving online like entity that grows over time in authority as well as uh, in, in actual content so you don't necessarily need to worry about the thought of continual content we'll, we'll get to that okay for right now let's just talk about the important elements that you need to remember when you have a blog platform and when you want to profit from it all right so before you get started make sure you set up your domain with hosting and then log into your hosting accounts cPanel okay now what you're going to want to do is click on there might be something that says quick install or uh, but anyway if you scroll down the cPanel there's usually a whole bar and it'll have like pictures of the WordPress icon and you know Shopify or different things depending on your provider okay ideally uh, your blog would would be at a dot com domain but you may have future plans to put a squeeze page on your dot com so you might want to blog install that your domain dot com slash blog either will work it doesn't really matter it's easy to change that later when you you know when or if you decide to change it okay now once you have that installed you can log into WordPress on your dashboard okay I suggest WordPress there are other things you can do besides WordPress such as blogger.com it's simple and easy and quite honestly I do have several several sites on blogger because uh, Google makes it real easy to create a post on blogger uh, directly from any post that you want so I like that uh, but but for maximum uh, authority and maximum monetization options and flexibility you really want to go with a wordpress.org software on a private host okay but right now we're going to talk about how to set up the blog for maximum authority and monetization okay so let's talk first about the theme so if you're someone you know who has lots of money and you want to start out with a premium paid theme go for it okay but it's not necessary free themes that are built into WordPress are actually really great starts and quite honestly you can always upgrade your theme and keep pretty much everything else on your site intact anytime in the future um, now do recognize that if you install a new theme you may have to make some tweaks to make it fit your content but it's very simple so what you want to do is watch out for downloading free themes off the internet randomly these often <laughs> have things that you don't want 
to be in there. You know, they might have um, spyware or other negative options. They might have built-in ads, you know, and it's sometimes hard to find links to their websites. Just keep in mind that nothing's really free. So if, you know, they have a reason that they put those freebies out there for people to use. It's usually an advertising reason. <laughs> uh, a better way to do this is to choose a free theme from those that are already installed you know in the WordPress dashboard so if you go into your dashboard and you click on appearances and then on themes you'll see a variety of themes that you can go with if you click on the add new button okay so at that point you can sort by featured newest recently updated or check off theme specifics that you want like colors columns layout features and subject okay um, there are some things that are real important that you want to make sure you get so unless your blog is a photography based blog which is totally cool if it is but unless it is you want to get one blog theme your theme you should make sure that text is showcased more than images on the home page it's good to have some images but generally not just images feel me now you also want a theme where the header doesn't take up the entire above the fold area so the above the fold area is obviously everything you see before you have to start scrolling down the page and remember there are different places this will land on different devices so be sure to preview the different devices um, tablet uh, phone sized um, computer sized you know so on and so forth okay now you want to put your above the fold area to show your header and a navigation bar right below the header and then the first snippet of the latest blog post ideally as well as the sidebar that shows your opt-in form and the freebie item those things should be uh, above the fold if you can make that happen that tends to convert better than any other combination of above the fold so um, you know if you look at uh, you know the themes available to you uh, at WordPress you know you're gonna see that some of them look like they take up the whole screen some of them you know for the huge header some of them much smaller uh, you know it, it just do what feels right to you I personally feel like a smaller header is more effective in almost every case unless you're you're selling something that requires visual you know uh, a visual draw in okay um, there are some people who do plan to launch an affiliate site um, for Amazon so they consider going with a specific review theme so you know you can do that and that's okay as long as it's not like some automated system that automatically pulls content into your site be careful about that stuff now in order to really succeed you want unique context content that is in your personal style not like not one of these scraper type sites that grabs text from elsewhere those those never succeed and people don't trust those you might get the traffic but when a consumer really wants a review they want to know the truth and they can certainly tell the difference between you know a personalized post and content you scraped from elsewhere okay now make sure that your settings are good this is important most default settings are perfect but there are a few things you want to, sh to do to ensure that your site performs at its best so you're going to want to go through the blog on your sidebar and check out each area to make sure everything is filled out okay under settings in general you can add the name of your site and a tagline you can set your time zone and make sure the other elements are how you want them to be okay then under settings and writing you scroll down to where it says updated service update services and if you want to you can add a list of ping sites that you want to be notified whenever your site has fresh content you can find recommended sites online so if you want to do that just cut and paste a list under settings and reading make sure that your blog set your blog is set to show the latest content and not a static page remember when people land they may not be bloggers themselves and so they might quickly glance to see if you have fresh content and not realizing that it's a set static page they might assume you haven't blogged for a long time and leave oops excuse me make sure the settings show a few posts okay such as five or ten and the syndication feed shows much more like 55 or 100 in the feed you can choose to show the full text and then double check and make sure your search engine vis visibility is unchecked because you don't want to block search engines from visiting your site really under settings and discussion check and allow check to allow people to comment on new articles 
and make them fill out their name and their email. Make sure you enable threaded comments and choose to manually approve and get notifications when anyone posts a comment. Under default avatar, you can choose Gravatar. This way, uh, most people have their avatar registered at gravatar.com. If you haven't done that, you can go and do that now and use the same email address that you use for the site. Okay, because when you upload a headshot so that your blog readers can build that trusted bond with you, that gives them a way to put a face to your name. Okay, now under settings and permalinks, make sure it's defaulted correctly, but make sure it uses this format. You want it to be yourdomain.com slash post. Okay, make sure you take all the numbers out and make sure it's just yourdomain.com slash post. You'll see that in that settings section. Now you don't want to use the official default wh where it uses like question mark page equals one two three instead of sample post style because you want your URL of your blog post to include the keywords in your title. See, ding right. Okay, just glancing at it, you can see you know which is helpful to both humans and search search engines. Like if you're if you were doing a you know, a, a post called how to stop panic attacks, well it would be like yourdomain.com slash how, how to stop panic attacks, see, uh, versus yourdomain.com slash question mark p equals 558 or whatever, see what I mean? The first one is clear, the second one could be any topic under the sun, basically. All right, um, next we're going to talk about profitable and helpful plugins, but we're going to take that into tomorrow's video, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up for today. I have several things to do. I'm getting ready to step into a client call, and I need to, of course, edit this video and pop it up for you guys. And there's one more video today coming on narcissistic abuse recovery. Okay, so if you have any other questions uh, regarding this topic, let me know in the comments below. And here's the question of the day. Ready? Okay. The question of the day is, do you have a blog already? And if you do, please share your URL in my comments section today. And I'd love to take a look at it. If you don't have a blog already, are you considering getting one? And if if so, what are your questions about blogging and and, and creating a blog that's right for you uh, and, and a blog that's profitable? Leave me comments with your blogging questions. I started out as a blogger in 2005, and I've never looked back. So. I know a lot about this stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up. I'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. As always, thanks for letting me be a part of your day and a part of your life. And thanks for being a part of mine. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon.